report back on the actions of uh, the team that was put forward by the board uh, to negotiate contracts on behalf of the unions that were up. There were four contracts. Uh, I'm pleased to report back that based on the goals the board set for the team for uh, Mr. Bean, uh, Attorney Gerard, myself, that we've reached uh, tentative agreements with all four of those unions. So I'll present them to you tonight and ask that you, we'll take this in two parts. The first part, um, I'll go over the agreements for you and the public, ask that you ratify, vote to ratify each one of those, and then we'll talk about the Warren articles afterwards and the wording, wording of the Warren articles after we've answered all your questions, okay? So in general, just doing the overview, again, four units. They included the Teamsters, the Public Works Employees Union, and two units in the fire department, the firefighters and the fire supervisors. Um, in general, they are all three-year deals. Uh, they, in general, are all uh, 333, with one exception, that is the Teamsters. I'll get into that. Um, they include uh, both language that was important to us previously with regard to the uh, Cadillac tax, excise tax, um, that protects the town from any impact should that remain. As you recall, it was kicked down the, the, the road a little bit by uh, the, the uh, federal law. Um, and all of our contracts now, if these should pass, will have the protective language. So no matter what happens with that, the town is protected um, and the taxpayers are protected from any impact on that. Everybody has agreed that if that should happen, uh, and those, as you know, those high cost plans, if those should be implemented and the tax is assessed, it will, they will either move to a plan which doesn't impact it or they will pay those costs and the taxpayers won't. Second is that uh, based on some changes on our insurer, there needed to be a change in the prescription medical plans. Each of these four units have agreed. Um, the options weren't good, but in the end, um, everybody's going to agree to move in 2018 to a new prescription medical plan. That plan will save the town money, and it will save the individual's money. Um, in part of, of doing that, there will be a change in what uh, all of these folks are used to for their uh, medical uh, pardon me, their prescription reimbursement plans. So we've created a fund where what was previously covered uh, will be covered during the period of the contract. We've put some money aside for that, for that sort of incentive to, to move us in that direction. And again, I think it's very important to say uh, there will be savings for both parties as a result of this, so it's a good thing. Um, now I'll go through, I think that's uh, overall what we did, kind of the global for each. I'll go through each of them now, more specifically, and answer any questions you have. I'll start with the uh, Teamsters. Uh, local 633. The Teamsters, as you may or may not know, is a group of folks across a number of different places. There's folks in the town office, dispatchers and civilian employees down at the police department, as well as some folks down at Public Works. Um, it covers a number of those folks. Primarily, I'll focus on cost items, but uh, the board, you've all received these items, uh, so you understand what these are. Uh, we've made some um, uh, corrections and updates to the recognition clause, no cost item related to that. Uh, some adjustments to the disciplinary procedures section of their contract. Again, no cost item to that, but clarified some issues. Uh, there is a new uh, agreement for folks in the public works who work during storms and what have you. Um, if they're held in for an excessive period of time, which is not unusual in the public works department for a plowing circumstance or some emergency for a very, very long period of time, and they're not able to get out to get meals, uh, we've worked a, we see this as a very small cost item. We'll either supply them a meal or do a reimbursement uh, that it wish the director wishes to deal with. Health insurance, we've got several issues to talk about in these. One is, as you recall, the direction from the board was we're migrating folks, trying to incent them to come uh, to look more at their health plans and give them an opportunity, if they wish to come off the plan, to make it more of an incentive. The numbers were very low in the past. Uh, we've agreed, as we did with the police department in the past, to increase those that if they opt out of the insurance, they choose to go on somebody else's plan and show us that. For a single plan, we'll pay $2,000 for a two-person, 3000 for a family, 4000 um, With respect to a, the Cadillac tax, we talked about that. There's a section in there. And the new section that deals with the insurance that I also overviewed briefly, uh, we go through in, in this agreement how that will, will be put, put in with regard to migrating to that new plan in 2018. Everyone stays the same in 2017, and you must make the new selection beginning in 2018 and remain there going forward. So those cost savings to the town will remain in those each of those years moving forward. Um, the wages, as I said, first year is going to be a 3%. We've added a step. Uh, right now their contract runs from newly hired to five years. 
we've added a step at one year for 3%. So essentially that first year, uh, cost of living adjustment for everybody will be 3%. We've made an adjustment based on agreement for, for, for positions that were substantially below peer group, something we've been doing you know, throughout the non-union. We did the same in here. I believe there's six total positions that we'll make an adjustment for in year one as well. The maximum anybody will see on that, those six positions that the adjustment will be, uh, is no more than 8%. I know that sounds like a big number, but again, some of those are very low paying jobs that we move to a, a more reasonable number. And again, where they wanted that 3%, we made this adjustment. Um, in years two and three, they've agreed to a 2%, 2%. So it's really, it's a 3% year one, two and two. And then there's an adjustment in that first year in the wages. Uh, in addition, we've talked about creating a new operations coordinator in the building department um, and discontinuing the secretary's position. Um, and we added a, a clause uh, to give management some flexibility in hiring highly skilled folks. Uh, we've had some issues, not issues, but we're hiring with, to recruit the best candidates and given the ability, if needed, that we can place people on that for our highly skilled positions, foremen, that type of thing, so that we can recruit very qualified folks to some of these positions we see some retirements coming in the future. That's the Teamsters uh, contract as an overview. And again, we think it's very fair. We think it's, uh, 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 it was a long time getting to. It took us, uh, I think we started sometime in September with all of these groups and before that. Um, and I'm very pleased with the results. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? No. Yes. Just reiterate. Yes, sir. For the town, one of our most important things was protect ourselves for future insurance. Uh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, our, our direction from the board was to, to go in and negotiate. Cadillac tax was something we were all very, very concerned with. Um, and the insurance issue was something foisted upon us in the middle of our negotiations. And that had risk to us. If we weren't able to resolve that issue, uh, we could have been exposed to paying that prescription claims down the road. Uh, it could have led to derailing the entire thing. I think we've made very good progress talking with units, and, and I think we've, we've solved that issue. So we've moved with them on raises, and they've moved with us on insurance. That's correct. And we, we expect to see savings moving forward from that prescription change. Again, we'll realize actually a higher number, but the individuals also see a savings themselves going forward. Yes, sir. And what about the 8%? So again, it, and again, it's important to understand those percentages can be challenging. You know, you're going to look at the actual dollar figures. The, the, the positions that had those greatest things were, you know, secretarial positions paying, you know, $14 or less, where in other areas we had people making more than that for the same position. So we equated those. Um, you know, looking at the real dollars, I think is how it's best to look at those. But we thought those were fair presentations based on, you know, what frankly were the lower end of the pay scale. We were doing major ones, and again, there were only six of those positions total that had a salary adjustment. And that's just here at um, with the Teamsters unit, correct? And that's not going to be in the other. No, all the other units are consistent with what we were directed to the three, three, three. And again, in this one. Because there were more changes in the first year, they have less, they went essentially three with those adjustments to two, where all our other units are going to be three, three, three across the three years. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Attorney Gerald, how much did outside counsel cost for union negotiations in the past per unit ballpark? Uh, well, it's $35,000 was budgeted each year uh, up until the year 2016. 2016. So, and in, in, uh, we, we've saved that amount this year. You two have done a, an extraordinary job, and uh, there were there were challenges that uh, have not been faced by boards in the past. Um, you negotiated last year, which was the Cadillac tax. An extraordinarily difficult uh, negotiation, uh, and very important to the union members who, uh, who work hard and, and have tough jobs. Policemen, firemen, and people are out there 24 hours a day uh, at Public Works in all kinds of weather. So, great job with you folks, and I, of, of course, support uh, your your efforts. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, your billet in here is the assistant town manager and chief negotiator. He's uh, proved extraordinarily uh, clairvoyant, so we appreciate that. You are a force multiplier for excellence. And uh, there have been some lean years in, in this town in the past in negotiations. Uh, there was a recession in 2008, and uh, union members and people remained loyal. Uh, uh, those that have remained loyal in this town as employees um, have uh, moved up the ladder, 
we've seen that all the department heads were hired from within. There was no external search. So there is a, a light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, this is a great town with great taxpayers and great citizens. And uh, we've got great employees, and I fully support these contracts, and thank you. Well, I just want to want to say it, it was, was because of these two gentlemen. It was also because of you, Mr. Bean, being part of that negotiating team. Uh, you guys did a, a, an effective job. You worked at it. I know it always hasn't been easy, but you you were you dealt with it, and uh, it, it took the three of you to do that. And and I, I as one board member appreciate that. Um, I will read the article so that everybody knows what it is. Twelve twelve. Might to, suggest we come back to the articles after. Let's go okay. through each contract. That that's fine. However you want to do it. Assume that you wish to ratify, and then we'll come back to the language. Okay, if that works for you. All right. So yeah, I'm. You want the mo motion? Up to I the move board, to, but if you'd like to do that, I think that makes sense. Move to ratify the tentative agreement as presented between the town and Teamsters Local 633, and authorize Chairman Bridal to sign the agreement on behalf of the board. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, the next one I'll touch on is the uh, public works employees. Um, that is the Hampton Public Works employees, SEIU Local 1984. And again, in the global uh, issues we just discussed with regard to Cadillac tax and insurance, those are also included in this contract. It is a three-year contract, 333, um, over its current uh, setup. There are a couple of other items in there. One is that uh, we, we did put in a, a talk to them about folks that go to school and benefit us, this, this uh, program called the Road Scholar Program. And that is a series of training uh, that are 25, 50, 75, and 100 hours worth of training on each milestone. And it's beneficial to us. It's folks who can help us uh, get our roads in good shape. So what we agreed to is there are milestones in each Road Scholar, one, two, senior Road Scholar, master Road Scholar. And we have done uh, annual payments for essentially education, the equivalent that we see in other unions with education benefits. So for Road Scholar 1, a $300 one-time payment a year. For the Road Scholar 2 achievement, 450 For Road Scholar Senior, Road Scholar 600 And for Master Road Scholar, again, the 100 hours, is a $1,200 one-time non-cumulative. So uh, we felt that was a reasonable uh, milestone to incent our folks to continue their training. Um, again, the health insurance issue, same issues we discussed with the uh, uh, Teamsters, uh, the same opt-out provisions we discussed with the Teamsters, the same excise tax we discussed with the Teamsters, um, and, and uh, let's see. Um, there was a change with leave administration. Again, this is not a cost factor issue, but it's an operations issue. Uh, previously, they were required to take four-hour increments. Um, if they went to watch a son's ball game or something in that case, uh, we've agreed to allow those to be in one-hour increments with department approval. Um, some adjustments to the bereavement leave, adding things that were missing previously. And then a cost item, the final cost item in their contract is um, in the stipends that they get, <coughs> pardon me, for buying a pair of boots. <coughs> pardon me. We've increased that by $150 per man upon proof of meeting the, you know, approved by the department, meeting the standards in there. Um, and again, it's uh, boots for what these folks do can be fairly expensive, so we felt that was a reasonable number. And that is a, an overview of the Teamsters, or pardon me, the Public Works Employees, SEIU 1984. Any questions? Regina? Jim? No. Negative. So? I think all the same remarks from the previous one. Well, most of that is for this one also. Yes, sir, and that seems consistent throughout, again, with the goals of this board were to try and keep the negotiations as, as on those major issues as close as possible, and that's what we, we attempted to do. I move to ratify the tentative agreement as presented between the town and the Hampton Public Works Employees SEIU Local 1984 and to authorize Chairman Bridal to sign the agreement on behalf of the board. I second that. Any questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Now there's two more, and that is the uh, firefighters. We'll start with firefighters local 2664. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and on theirs, again, the opt-out provision is the same, uh, 234. Um, the issue with regard to uh, the health insurance <coughs> and the migrating plans is the same. Um, the Cadillac tax language is the same. Um, and something we'll see with them now is, uh, which we felt was, was a direction of the board and very important. And, to this point in time, um, the firefighters have not, as the other units have in prior negotiations, have migrated and paid a higher, new employees have paid a higher 
percentage of their uh, costs. So, uh, you know, it was a phased in thing where uh, prior negotiations are taking new employees and that they're going to pay a percentage higher than the current employees to see future savings. In the fire service, uh, they chose to take a different approach, which we agreed to under this contract. They have not paid that additional percentage in any of the prior contract negotiations, and they've agreed to do so now. And what we're going to do is migrate them in a payment. They don't want to create a two-tier. They're very, uh, in the fire service, it's very important to them that they maintain and uh, new employees and the current employees remain paying the same. So what's different here is all of the employees, as opposed to just the new ones, are going to pay a higher percentage. So we're going to realize more savings to the town or, or that money's going to be recovered quicker in the short term, where the other one, it's a long-term solution. This is in the immediate. So what they're going to do over the three years is move that one and a half percent additional pay. So in the first year, and if it's passed in 2017, they'll pay an additional percentage. In the second year, it'll remain at that 1%. And in the third year, it'll add additional half a percent. So it'll be one and a half over the three years of additional payment. Um, they too will have the pool. Um, the Cadillac tax, as I mentioned, is the same. There is some language to allow them to take uh, advantage of the 457 uh, deferred compensation plan uh, federal loan programs that we already have under policy, but included in language here. They are also a 333 over the three years. Um, there was also some adjustment in regard to they have a long standing number of um, stipends for various milestones in their training with regard to, for example, if you're an EMT, an EMT advanced, a paramedic, and such. Um, we have agreed to uh, max that maximum previously had been 17%. We've agreed to move that to 18%, as well as at a percentage now for, as you know, we have a very robust uh, uh, marine safety program that requires some pretty advanced training. So what we've agreed to is if they complete three training, rescue swimmer, um, state boat operator school, as well as the advanced boat operator school, um, that they can also now put that into that pool for that additional percentage that falls in uh, with what their other issues are. So again, it's three requirements uh, to receive that. Um, there was also a percentage for the fire alarm operators to have advanced training. And again, similarly, that uh, the public safety telecommunicator and tactical dispatch, again, milestones in training. Uh, there's some language, again, non, not, a, not a cost item, but with regard to uh, making recommendations. It was in the contract previously, but had expired some time ago about a NFPA standard 1500, which is a uh, professional standard that sets sort of the best practices. And we've agreed to uh, spend time both with union members and department members to relook at those standards and make recommendations going forward on best practices. Many of these standards cost money. We're very clear that that would have to go through the budget process. None of them are binding, but to put the best practices forward for a consideration in the future if need be. None of those being, again, binding cost items. And that's the extent of 2664s. Any questions, comments? Yeah, just real quickly before your, your motion, Jim, is uh, in the uh, boat uh, 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 incentives, if the uh, boat service is terminated, uh, the position of town Thank you, sir. Yes. And, and again, we saw that with the neighbors in Portsmouth where when they discontinued theirs, those uh, there was con not a controversy, but a discussion about the contract language. We have added language in there that if that should be discontinued, then those incentives would go away as well. Not that we envision that occurring, but uh, if that happens, we put protective language in there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. I move to ratify the tentative agreement as presented between the town and Hampton Firefighters Local 2664 and to authorize Chairman Bridal to sign the agreement on behalf of the board. Second by Regina. All those in favor? Unanimous. And finally, um, the Firefighters of the Department Supervisors Association, Local 3017. And again, on the global issues, they remain the same with regard to the opt-out provision, uh, the changes in medical, the additional contributions that they will they will be making. Um, supervisors are doing that as well. Um, the pool for reimbursement of the medical, again, everything we've discussed there, the Cadillac tax. Um, the two other differences that we've put in here have to do with, again, um, issues on the uh, education benefit, something we saw similar. There were, no benefit, there were none of those in the supervisor's contract. Uh, so we did put in uh, our language for either a 300 a 500 or $1,000 uh, one-time payment annually for either having 30 credit hours, an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, and uh, expanded some language that previously told the one person in the unit 
uh, with regard to longevity pay for milestones of service of 10 years, 15 years, 20, and 25 years. Um, 333 over the three years. Um, and those are the cost items that I see. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Yeah, so I just want to say, so when the firefighters, they pay in now, they've never done that before. They, That's correct. The additional amount. So it's going to be 1.5% over the next three years. Exactly. Same as 2664. First year, 1%, zero. Second year, another half a percent in the final year. And you and, and that Mark stays forward. And Mr. Bean succeeded in doing that this year. The At the board's time. direction, yes, we did. Thank you. And, and okay, that's fine. I'm, I move to ratify the tentative agreement as presented between the Hampton Fire Department, Supervisors Association Local 3017, and to authorize Chairman Bridal to sign the agreement on behalf of the board. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Now, if you want to loop back to the language in the Warren articles. Yep. And the costing items. I'd like to invite Christy back up if she'd like to join us. You folks all have copies of the Warren article language? Yeah. Yep. How would you like to proceed, Mr. Chairman? Well, I think we should read them so that they're clear, and that way there we can vote to. Would you like me to do that? or Sure. If, you, if you'd like to read those, I'd, I'd love it. <laughs> uh, so Article 17 would be the first. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in the three-year collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the Professional Firefighters of Hampton Local 2664, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level. 2017, 92000 $801 for 39 weeks over the 2016 level. 2018, $130,502 for 52 weeks over 2017 level. 2019, $125,006 for 52 weeks over the 2018 level. And in 2020, 30587 for 13 weeks over the 2019 level. And further, to raise and appropriate the sum of $92,801 to fund the cost items related to the Professional Firefighters Local 2664 salaries and benefits for 2017. Such sum represents the additional salaries and benefits over the 2016 budget level for the first of three years that are contained in a collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Hampton by its Board of Selectmen and the Professional Firefighters Local 2664 pursuant to RSA 273-A. The compounded cumulative cost impact over the three-year contract years of the agreement is estimated to be 782076 Majority vote required. And then the fiscal impact note by the Finance Department estimates the 2000, estimated 2017 tax impact on $92,801 is .028 cents per $1,000 of valuation or 2.8 cents per thousand dollars of valuation. Any now questions? I know why you wanted me to read that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? So moved. So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Article 18. Shall the town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in a three-year collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Fire Department Supervisors Association Local 3017, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level. 2017, $51,703 is 39 weeks over the 2016 level. 2018 is 76991 which is 52 weeks over 2017 level. 2019, 71686 52 weeks over the 2018 level. 2020, 17,987, 13 weeks over the 2019 level. And further to raise and appropriate the sum of $51,703 to fund the cost items related to the Hampton Fire Department Supervisors Association Local 3017 salaries and benefits for 2017. Such sum represents the additional salaries and benefits over the 2016 budget level for the first of three years that are contained in the collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Hampton by its Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Fire Department Supervisors Association Local 3017 pursuant to RSA 273-A. The compounded cumulative cost impact over the three contract years of the agreement estimated to be $448,858. 
Fiscal Impact Note Finance Department estimates 2017 tax impact on $51,703 is 0 .016 cents per $1,000 valuation or 1.6 cents per $1,000 of valuation. Make the motion that we approve. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Article 19, shall the Town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in a three-year collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local 633, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level. 2017, 54,274 is 39 weeks over the 2016 level. 2018 is $52,436, 52 weeks over the 2017 level. 2019 is $35,655, 52 weeks over the 2018 level. 2020 is $7,965 for 13 weeks over the 2019 level. And to further raise and appropriate the sum of $54,274 to fund the cost items related to the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local 633 salaries and benefits for 2017. Such sum represents the additional salaries and benefits over the 2016 budget level for the first of three years that are contained in a collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Hampton by its Board of Selectmen and the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local 633, covering various positions at the Town Office, Department of Public Works, and Police Department, pursuant to New Hampshire RSA 273-A. The compounded cumulative cost impact over the three years of the contract the agreement is estimated to be $351,428. Majority vote required. Fiscal impact note, the finance department, the estimated 2016 tax impact on $54,274 is 0 .016 cents per $1,000 of valuation, 1 1.6 cents per $1,000 of valuation. Motion. I make a motion. Motion. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Article 20. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in a three-year collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the State Employees Association, SEIU Local 1984, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level. 2017, $72,237, which is 39 weeks over the 2016 level. 2018 is $99,321, which is 52 weeks over the 2017 level. 2019, $81,384, 52 weeks over the 2018 level. And 2020, 16974 which is 13 weeks over the 2019 level. And further, to raise and appropriate the sum of $72,237, to fund the cost items related to the State Employees Association, Inc., SEIU Local 1984 salaries and benefits for 2017. Such sum represents the additional salaries and benefits over the 2016 budget level for the first of the three years contained in the collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Hampton by its Board of Selectmen and the State Employees Association, Inc., SEIU 1984 Public Works employees, pursuant to New Hampshire RSA 273A. The compounded cumulative cost impact over the three contract years of the agreement is estimated to be 576,946, majority vote required. Fiscal impact note, finance department, the estimated 2017 tax impact on $72,237 is .022 cents per $1,000 valuation, 2.2 cents per $1,000 of valuation. I'll make a motion that we approve. Motion. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Unanimous.